Hello, I'm Richard Brooks. The purpose of this tape is to provide you with good color, good pattern, not so desirable color and pattern in each of our standard colors and in quite a few of the rares that we happen to, happen to have, have here. Uh, our first color, as it appears in our color standard, is the blue bar. We will not be focusing on the way the bird's standing or whether it's a cock or a hen or old or young, but on color. This is a blue bar. It's the, it's the color that I really like. You notice the evenness of the chest, the richness of the neck, the, uh, we get him around here, you see the, the bars are good and, and uh, solid. Uh, dark. Uh, there's no band across the belly. Uh, there's no fading in, down in the hock and the hip. Uh, one of our problems in years past has been that birds get too light under here. Now you can still see that this bird is blue. Uh, I want to bring in Another bird that right now is showing less desirable uh, color. The hen probably will be okay in due time, but right now it, you see a broken band in the bar. Uh, it fades out. She's molting, and that's probably the reason for it. But we see a lot of pigeons with their very narrow front bar. Uh, or almost none at all, or very broken, and it isn't molt. It's just that that's the way they are. Um, so I wanted you to see that. Richard, on the hen, she looks like she's a little darker. The cock looks more of a well, powdery blue. Yeah, I think she is, and that could be because of her molting, too. I'm not sure, but certainly hen. Now, we're going to bring in a blue check, commonly called light blue check. Keep in mind that a blue check is supposed to have at least half of the shoulder feel in the light color that you see in the bar showing through the checking. If it's darker than that, it's a dark check. And we're going to go through blue check, dark check, even darker check, and black check, and then a mismark to show you the difference. Notice very clear, if you could get real close to that bird, even in the chest, there's a little bit of very light checking. But as you get around, you can see at least half of the dark, yet she has nice bars. Uh, if I would fault her from looking at it in the light, it appears that her hawks are a little light. Actually, they're not white, but uh, I know that the camera can mislead us sometimes. Now, I want to bring an old cock out and put in there that's just a little bit darker, but still a blue check. You compare these two, you notice that she is just a very little bit lighter in some areas. Uh, in years past especially, we've had some outstanding blue checks that had a lot of patchiness, light patches on the shoulders. Kind of like what that young hen has there, a little well, bit further like back? Well, a little bit right there, How about but, the... but I've seen them where like there wasn't a dozen checks in the shoulder. and. I don't think that's as desirable as this is. I, I think what we're looking at here is uh, about what we want. Now, there is one type of bird that's misleading, and I want to bring it up. It is not a blue check, but a lot of people think it is. If it was a red, we might call it a mealy. That's uh, what we call a pencil factor in there. I've heard it described in various ways as sooty and dirt and whatnot. Uh, but uh, you know, at first glance, he looks like a very light check, but he simply isn't. And so, in showing that bird, show him as a mismark. Okay, here we go in a mismark class. Yeah. 
Now, race and homers, people call that a pencil, like you just said. That's pencil, what I call it. That's fine. Yeah. They call him a pencil. Uh huh. I think we can see that this bird, this is a young hen. She is darker, but still, no belly band, nice uh, translucent color in the neck. Uh, but you can't see half of the field. Her particular up high on the shoulder, she's beginning to check in. You notice about the upper third of her shoulder is much darker. And this, in, in a small show where you're only going to have black checks and blue check, maybe you could go blue check with it. But I would rather just keep her as a dark check. She's never been showed, it's obvious, and she don't know what this is. On that last hen, I noticed a lot of people talk about her as being a um, smoky. Well, I'm not sure. There's, I wouldn't call her smoky. There's just some of these checks that come up a little. You got one. Now, this bird, in my opinion, is a dark check, but some people might call him a black check, but I see an awful lot of light coming through on his wing shield. And again, he's even colored. You don't see, see the little checking down in the chest, very little bit on the thigh but no belly band, uh, no fading out, uh, pretty even all over. Uh, now, see, you brought up a subject there, Richard, about me calling him a dark check. That's something I talked to Cass Childs about. Uh -huh. Now, to me, I would call this bird a dark check, but like he said, some people call him a black check. So. That's right. Now, I'll, I'll get one. What, before I get a little lighter dark check, I'll get what I consider a black check. Anything from this color on, as dark as they can get, to me, is a black check. Again, a lot of checking on his breast. Come on around there where we can see you. Come on. Uh, two old cocks kind of eyeing each other. <laughs> But no banding. To me, in color, that's one of the worst faults that a bird can have. And yet, I see judges, good judges, pay no attention to it in selecting a class winner or a champion. But to me, uh, I hope you can see the difference in those two. And oh, I'm yeah. going to bring a little light of dark check out here uh, to help you distinguish between that one. I'll take this one out, back out. Uh, do you have anything on your property with a band across the chest that you can show on the top? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, if it is, it'd be a late young one because I just don't tolerate it. Okay. To me, is a dark check, but he's about as light as you could get a dark check. Okay, yeah, see, you it's see obvious that he doesn't have. Uh, now he has a little bit of a belly band, and I've never showed that bird for that reason. I, I just don't like. Uh, now, again, Richard, he kind of looks a little, uh, what I see a lot of people call sooty. His pattern, his checking pattern's a little, like, um, washed well, out. no, I, let me get him up close. Okay. I don't think, at least I don't see it that way. I, I've raised a lot of sootiness in racing homers, and I, I wouldn't call it that. It, it's, uh, you know, it's a fairly clean pattern. 
It is a cl it's up close. Just, it's just that all along here, she is much darker. And down here is darker. The only blue check patch he has is a little one right in there. But you know, there's more than half of it covered here and, and all along here. So I, to me, he's a, he's a dark check. But if you had a small show, and say you had uh, ten checker cocks, and he was in the lighter five. You know, you might give, but it's a national or a district show, or uh, the national young bird show, or something. He's got to show as a dark check. But because of that, you had a band. I, I never like show band. him. And another thing is, I never use him on a standard colored hen. I, I've kept this cock because of that to use on uh, some of my rares, where that gets wiped out. He's been with what I call a champagne hen, which is a, uh, this year, is a dilute, red, reduced hen. And uh, the youngsters don't show it. In fact, it might be interesting to bring one of his youngsters out here. Yeah, it would be nice to, now. Uh, to show what happened there. Just, this happens to be the latest baby that I raised out of him this year, so it's in a ragged mold. But it, but as you can see, <coughs> he doesn't have any belly band or anything. But he says he's red, so he wouldn't have it. But I've seen it in red, just like everything else. But this, this cock here is reduced, and uh, I'll use him as that. This is a dark, a black check cock, and, uh, well, I've got a wing turned down, but that won't matter. You again see that no band, a little checking all over the chest. Come on, let's straighten it out. Now, is this a T-pattern black check, Richard? People call yeah, T-pattern? I, I, I think he's a T-pattern. Some people might call him a velvet, but I can still see I can some little light flecks. Yeah, I can see that. There. Yeah. But the main thing I want to point out is that that bird carries all the way, see, even in the color. Shanks, hawks, uh, thigh, on all the way up, and then his uh, translucent coloring in his neck starts up there. And his wing is a good, even color pattern. Uh, I, I've personally always felt that splotchiness in any chicken was a fault. Uh, maybe not something that you count a whole lot as against type, but nevertheless a fault when you're trying to breed them. And I, I uh, really like this bird's pattern, and I've bred him now. Ooh for two years and uh, I've never never gotten a mispatterned bird out of him. His, uh, his birds come well patterned, no white back. Uh, it gets a little light back in this section but no no white. Uh, now show that back again, Richard, because that's something that yeah. a lot of people don't really yeah, get on uh, their birds. I've noticed in... Uh, Can you turn him a little bit so I that I can the take... There you go, that's better. last five years in particular, that we're probably not paying enough attention either to back cover or back color pattern. Uh, yeah, Bill Sleeper talks about birds, and he wants this in the back. He yeah. says that in his black checks, he wants this to carry all the way down like that bird yeah. does through the tail. Yeah. Um, he is real stickler on the getting too light in the yeah. saddle, and that's the saddle area, right, Richard? Is that area where the black yeah. checking's going through? Yeah. Uh, also, of course, the width of the tail ought to appear as one feather. Right. Always. Any wide-tailed or splay-tailed bird is... Well, I've always found we weak around the... Uh, end of the back up there around the, the cone and all the feathers and the mm -hmm. oil gland and all that just uh you you put your hands underneath their chest and on their back and do this and those splay tail birds the tail will fly yeah up. the tail fly up yeah. all right we're dealing with red bar there's a 
There's the cockpits. Real clean in the chest. Has a little bit of marking in the lower part of the wing shield, almost like the faint beginning of a third bar. I don't like that. Here's the color. Well, geez, you really tell difference now. Yeah, that I like better, but of course there's no comparison in the type. Um, I'd like to point out that this cock, even though he has a little bit of dirtiness in there, has much better bars, uh, a very translucent neck that I love. The this bird has that little bit there, and while I don't consider it a fault, it just shows a Karen Blue. Uh, nevertheless, I prefer the neck type on this bird. I want to get a daughter of this bird out here to show you. This is actually one of my experimental efforts. I'm trying to get this type and, and the good qualities here on this light colored bird. Now, Richard, on that light colored bird, when I was in racing homers, we used to call that a what would they always call them powdered silvers because you know they didn't call well, them but would you call it almost like a powdered red bar yeah i suppose that that we use that word powdered they're gorgeous when you get a good one but uh i just want to point out the difference that i'd prefer the color of his wing shields to the color of this one this one had a little bluish cast and then when i put them away i want to bring the daughter of this one out and this one didn't have a red bar daughter. I've got a red check troll out of him. Uh, incidentally, the little blue check hen that we showed here a while ago, uh -huh. with the beautiful color, is out of this cock. Okay, I want to ask you a question because, you know, we hear a lot about this word powder. Okay. Yeah. On the blue bars here, powder blue bars, which are very light blue bars, very dark bars. Yeah. And that's why I'm asking you about the silver, because, or the red bar here. I keep calling them silvers because of my old racing well, over there. Well, these are counterparts, certainly, of what we used to call the powder blue bar. Yeah. You don't really see that many of them anymore, simply because they got so much what is actually white on them. And uh, we don't like it. But uh, we'll put the color that I'm trying to get. See the difference? And of course, it'll always be easier in a hen with that single factor than in a cock bird. But uh, she's out of that real light cock that we just had up here. And a true silver hen, a dilute of blue. And of course, she couldn't inherit anything from the blue hen because hens don't inherit from their mother in color. Uh, while we're talking on that subject, people get confused. Hens do inherit from their mother pattern. Okay. So don't get the idea that, you know, that it's just color that a hen has to get from the father. A, a red bar, cock pure for red bar, would have to throw a red daughter. But if the mother was a red check, it could be a red check daughter. Okay. Now I'll get her full brother, a little younger bird, but show you what having the two factors of color does to him. See, his mother being true silver, he's intense. So he's a red bar, but see, he's got that crescent across his chest, which to me seems to signify the fact that this cock is, is a red pigeon with a second factor for blue. Even cleaner in color, in pattern, than the hen. But with the crescent. Check. I get the feeling today that most fanciers want them dark. Almost like a, I call brick red, but uh, well, they call them velvet. See yeah. the red tipping down on the ends of the wing. Uh, I'll bring out some lighter ones and uh, let you look at them. I guess you could call him a red velvet. Uh, again, good, good, clean chest under there. 
some checking in it. Uh, now, while he's in there, I have handy here some much lighter young cocks. I'll bring a couple of them out. This is the son of the darker of the two red bars we had at. The first one you brought out? This is a full brother to that real light check, blue check young hen. See, he's much lighter. Yeah, there is a major difference yeah. there. All right, this bird is out of a yellow teeth pattern hen and a red check cock. I'll bring uh, the father out here and show you just a massive old stock bird. And yet, uh, red to red, it almost looks like that the faded element was introduced, but that isn't faded. That's just a lighter, frostier, uh, red check. Now, as you move them around. Well, you really can see a difference between all three of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. You really can. And uh, then I want to bring the old, the father of this one out to give you an idea of still a different approach to red. A little frosty bird came out of a very dark tea pattern yellow. And this cock, this is an old stock cock, but as you see, not light, but he does have a little bit of frost in this up. And while we're on color, I might mention that I have measured him from eye to eye across his head flat. And he measures an inch and a half. I've never owned a pigeon uh, in my life of this breed that had that kind of head width. Now, this is a nice wide-headed cock, but you see the difference? Oh, yeah. I'll get him up close. It's unbelievable. It makes him look round-headed. Well, not when he was standing in the cage, it didn't, you know, he, you can see the reach out on him. Yeah, it makes him look round-headed till you look at the width. See, alongside my fingers. Jeez. Now, and Richard, I know she's got a little black ticking in him, so he's got oh, some he's, blue he, in him. He's out of a, a black, uh, almost tea pattern mother. Yeah, he, well, we probably always have variety of red. This, I think this is the red that uh, people were after color-wise now. Grizzle. And it can be anything from a black spread with a few white speckles on its head to a white pigeon with a few white with orange eyes, really. And uh, a little grizzling here and there. They run the gamut, but This is what you typically call a barred grizzle. Now I've got a daughter of his in here. When he was mated to an Andalusian hen. Of course the Andalusian hen couldn't say spread. Uh, of course, an indigo spread, and she's almost white. The pattern seems to have modified the color on the daughter a little bit. See, now I want to bring a more typical checkered grizzle out uh, to. This is a typical checkered group. You can get a blue check with just a little grizzling around the head. You can get them in a black with the speckles. You can get red grizzle in all of these patterns. And we have a few of them here, but uh, Maybe I will bring one. I'll have to go outside to get him, but to show you. Let me get this old cock out of here so there's no fighting, and I'll okay. bring back the red. Lighter have a different pattern. 
in the young cock is grizzled. That's actually a son of this red grizzled old cock. Uh, made it to a blue bar hen. Incidentally, in color breeding, just about anything in the blue black factor, anything in the grizzle factor, anything in the faded factor, anything in the spread factor, particularly indigo. I like to use a good solid blue bar background. It just seems to work better. People ask about some of these colors and I think that's a big part of the key. Now a lot of people are trying to breed the color, you know, the two blue grizzles you got in there. A lot of people like that yeah. color. Even darker, like almost a black grizzle. Um, well what makes them, to me, what makes them outstanding like this young cox color is bronze. You know, we all hate bronze in our black chicks, and that's where it is, and the most powerful pigeon. But if you can get it, this red has some bronze background to him, so put on a perfectly beautiful blue barred hen. He, he threw two sons that carry that bronzing in the griddle, particularly in the bar. And just uh, slate is another color that goes well with grizzle, but it ruins everything else. If you if you put slate into your grizzle, you can pay to kill all the blue bars they raise. Do you have any slate color no, birds? I've okay. eliminated them for that reason. Okay. People love this type grizzle. See, there's a little bit of bronze in along there. This is actually the mother to the hen, to the cock. Now, 1595, it was reserve national champion at Salt Lake. And he was pretty much this color, if you remember. Actually, between the grizzle, you hear about opal grizzle. Now, there, she's in the molt, but I, I think you can see the grizzle and the opal. Now, I'll catch her and wing her here. And, now these come much lighter. I'll, I'll catch a lighter one, a young hen that I happen to have close by. <clears throat> but this is the color that I love. You see the grizzle, see the grizzle, see the grizzle, and then those beautiful opal wings. So we put her away and then we'll talk about opal. My favorite showbirds, that's 1010. Uh, I don't show her anymore. And she wants to come out and get my hand. But uh, she's twice reserved national champion. In five years, she was never defeated as an opal. Her mother went five years before that and was actually uh, about the same type bird, but didn't have quite the uh, balance. She's getting a little rough now, and uh, it's sear, and in the waddle. Opal can be anything, yellow, red. Uh, this happens to be a sort of a dark blue check. Uh, I'll bring you out what's almost a tea pattern in one of her grandsons. And then I want to bring you out two or three that show you how opal can almost disappear. Of course, you can't get opal unless the bird is showing opal. Where you really get fooled is in a spread. I have a spread in here that's jet black to your really examiner. And I was flabbergasted to get two opals out of her until I, and I made one opal, until I checked the pedigree and realized that she was masking opal. Is a late hatch last year, grandson of 1010. You notice it's a richer bronze, and this is where bronze really comes in. If you can uh, use a lot of bronze, um, it just enriches it so much. Now, some people prefer barred opal, and I'll bring you one here while we're looking for Richard, color. When you're talking bronze, are you talking to like a black check carrying bronze? Is that what Same you're talking? Same thing. Yeah, okay. You put Cause in I, other words, I made her with a black check carrying bronze to get this kind of a bird. Okay. Now, I want to go get her son that is his father. And to look at him, you'd say, oh, that's just another black check. But I want to show you the opal in it. 728. Son of 1010. Say, gee, a black check. I'm going to zoom him in. Can you pick that opal up right there? And right here. Oh yeah, I got it on the back. Yeah. Show that wing again, Richard. Yeah. Right here, see it? 
Okay. So, if they don't have opal, see, he's got it on the trailing edges here. If you can't find it showing, they're never going to throw it because they don't care. Some people mistake that for bronzing, yeah, though. No, What's the that's, difference? That's definitely opal. Okay. See it laying yeah. in there? Yeah. I'm just saying that some people mistake that for bronzing. They call you that gotta, a bronze. You have to know the difference. But there's three generations. Now, on this black check cock, would you enter him as an opal or as a mismark? Or what would you do? He, he doesn't go anywhere. Okay. He's never been out of the low. No, but I meant if you went oh, in the to show. Be a mismark. Okay. Yeah. But when you get one like that, look, now, 1010 is regarded as having one of the largest heads on a hen in the breed. Look at his head. Yeah. I, I love the bird, but I was asking so, you in case yeah, people want to enter a bird like that. Wing butts there and the whole bit. So, no. Uh, some of these, you know, when you get something, sometimes you just have to take care of it. That's another grandson. You see the difference? Yeah. I've uh, seen birds lighter than that yet, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, I'm going to bring a barred young lady at okay. you in a minute. You can actually, you can probably see the opaline pattern better in this color. See, the every stalk and the end of every feather is is laced like a oriental frill. Now, is that what they originally called as opal then? Is it what... Oh, no. Okay. Ever since, well, I introduced opal from a... Uh, Joe Frazier had a blue check giant homer opal that really was, as as giants go, a cull. But as show racers go, he you know, had more of the station and and was sort of small for a giant. And I crossed him on to a hen that I had down from Miss Red family, and and got this baby to start with was a red opal cock. And uh, early on, I got a lot of them miscolored. And then as I, because I used a blue cock that was off of Glen Marcus 103, we had a split mating one year. And uh, they just came lighter. And then as I began to occasionally get a darker one and liked them, why I uh, started putting T pattern black check, particularly with bronze. So there you get a uh, strong difference. And to me, this color is so striking because look at the dark neck and the light wing shields and then those beautiful scalloped blue flight tips. See? So it, it, uh, it just makes a real striking color. But one's not better than the other one. We'll, we'll go out in a couple minutes now and bring you a barred youngster to show you. This is a late hatch opal bar young cock. He's out of the original blue bar cock that we had out here to show blue bars and that dark opal grizzled hen that we had out here. And I put them together late and this is what happened. And you can see that he has a, he's never been in a cage before. He's right in the middle of his moat. But it does show you what. Uh... Now I notice on the back there are a couple flights are real light. Are those young flights or are those? Uh, those are uh, the new ones coming in. And his flights will be very light, see? The new ones coming in, he's got four to go. See, they're considerably lighter. Same thing will go with the tail. It will get lighter. It will be like that, that light laced bird that we had, but you can see. Now this will vary also. I could bring you out birds where this is dark bronze. Sometimes it's almost pink. Yeah, I hatched a, a, a blue bar grizzle this year out of a hen you sent me, and it is pink. It's yeah. And it's a real light, light. Now, I think while we have him here, It'd be a good idea to bring out a recessive opal. Okay. While recessive opal shows in the rare classes, uh, 
All that I've ever been able to raise, and mine go all the way back to Hamilton's original 316 cock, have been bars. If there are any checkered recessive ovals in our breed, I have not seen them. I'd love to have one because I'd love, you know, that uh, what we used to call mosaic in the racing home, that beautiful opal check. But I don't have them. But let me find one of the recessive opals. Now, this is a recessive opal. And I'll put him up there, but if, if you notice how pale by comparison, though they're both barred. See, this bar is looks like it's almost an indigo. I've seen that very too. But in the recessive opal, all of them I've had any dealings with, this light color with the end of the flight being quite lighter. Oh, yeah, I can see that. And the tail band. Uh, it, not everybody can tell a difference in recessive and dominant just to look at them and even those that know them the best probably will miss now and then due to the great variety but I think you can see that the recessive is just a, a lighter more powdery looking color. Now you can't explain what a recessive and dominant is, Richard, because I think well, people want to know that. The dominant opal is our typical opal, and one opal parent, no matter what you breed it to, can breed opal. Recessive opal is a color that's been around in racing almost for a long, long time. In our breed, the first one was hatched in Jack Hamilton's loft a long time ago, 20, 25, 30 years, I don't remember. Yeah. First one was 316. I barred him when he was very old and got my start. McClista had some of them. Now, do they produce opals, the recessive opals? You've got to have it on both sides, and it doesn't have to show on both sides. I bred the original cock to my best blue hen. It was the blue hen that's picture is in my head, I believe, in either the, I think, 1982 special. And then to her daughter. And I raised seven blue bars, and I threw them in a pen and left them all year. I bred 23 blue bars before I got one recessive opal, and then I got two. And I, one of them was better than the other one, so I kept him, and he's behind all of them. But what I call your attention to, if I get this little cock turned around, see the dominant opal in the blue factor is just definitely a darker, bolder yeah. color. This is almost a pastel, and. Uh, well, you said now just a few seconds ago that you should breed a recessive opal to another opal to get opals? No. Oh. If you breed a recessive opal to another opal, and the dominant opal doesn't carry recessive, all the offspring that are opal will be dominant opal. But you may get blue bars, blue checks, or whatnot. Because, first place, the recessive is pure, but the dominant cock carries the second factor. Okay. Uh, incidentally, you can breed a recessive opal and a dominant opal together without any ill effects. But if you put two dominant opals together, there's something about the gene of a dominant opal that all of the homozygous babies will die in the egg. If they inherit dominant opal from both sides, they'll die. Now keep in mind again that opal is not a color, it's a pattern. Now I want to ask you a you question. Have blue opal, red opal, yellow opal, <coughs> opal grizzle, you know, whatever. Uh, so don't get color and pattern confused. In other words, this is a modifying agent that makes blue bar look this way. This is a modifying agent that makes blue bar look this way, except you've got to have it in both parents. Okay, now. You brought out a real dark check cock that had opal in him. Yeah. You know, okay, now, was yeah. he a dominant or recessive? Oh, everything I showed you up to this bird is dominant opal. Okay. This is the only recessive opal pigeon I've showed you. Okay. Now, if you wanted to breed more recessives, how would you go about that? Well, if, if I had just one, and right. that was this bird, I'd made him to two of my best hens. Color cross. pattern doesn't matter? Okay. Well, other than if you want a good clear, you know. Okay. And then, uh, well, his father this year, I made it to two hens because I let his father go. He was six or seven years old and somebody wanted him, so 
I, I let him go, and we'll use him instead. Um, but his, his sons and his daughters, no matter what the mothers, made it together. You will get some recessive oak. Okay. You may have to breed 20 to do it, but... Yeah, I wanted to ask yeah. you, because there's people interested in recessive oak, yeah. and they'd like to show them, like to breed them. Well, there's quite a few of them around now. Uh, originally, Hamilton, and most of what Hamilton has, has it in it, because he used that cock for the power as well. Um, McClister had some of it, and I think it, some of that ended up in Ralph Woodson's love, because they breed a lot of them. I breed them. And other people have gotten them off of me, and I'm sure have gotten them off of Jack and Ralph. So they are around, but you have to know from the pedigree what you're talking about. Yeah. I loaned, uh, I think it was Bill Henderson, a, I can't remember, it was a blue bar hen, I believe, and that carried it. And he got a cock out of that, and later on, I think he used, I believe he used a recessive opal hen on to that cock inadvertently and got recessive opal. <coughs> So you've got to have it on both sides. But you'll never get recessive opal out of a dominant opal unless perchance he carries it. Okay. But there's nothing lethal about recessive opal. You can breed them together and they're homozygous. They have to be homozygous to be opal. They'll hatch no problem. Okay. But the dominant opal, if it's homozygous, they're dead. Yeah, I wanted to ask you that because people are like to mess with color, especially our new novice members. Uh, I'm going to hold these two. <laughs> And, and you have to understand that this could vary some, but I, I think you, you know, you get the picture of the difference. Yes, got a good shot, yeah. Yeah, dilute of red. Now this is yellow, right? Okay. This is yellow, a yellow bar, a yellow tea pattern. This is the mother to the cock. I'm showing that I'll put up here in a minute. The tea pattern one is. She was made it this year to that old wide-headed red cock ahead I had here, I showed you the frosty-headed red young cock. That was the parent. Uh, this is a hen I showed that was best hen at two shows at Louisville and Des Moines last year. Typical yellow bar, typical tea pattern. Uh, which do you prefer? It's a matter of choice. Personally, I, I originally I liked the bars, and I kind of like the tea pattern. <laughs> Uh, I put the cock up there, which is sort of in between. I guess you'd call him a yellow check, dark, yellow dark check. See the difference? Very definite pattern. So the dark end is his mother. Oh yeah, you really can see a difference between him and his mother. Yeah, uh, yeah. His mother's a lot darker. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> call him definitely a yellow chick. The old dark hen is is a tea pattern, and, and that Ireland hen is is a yellow bar. Can you pull so the hen out? Anything in that span. What you don't want is a dirty yellow. You have to be careful. I try to put my yellows either with very light blue bars, in which case you get this shading like you got here, or if you put them with red, you don't get any shading. See, it stays solid yellow. And I guess that's one reason that I'm trying to make my reds and yellows. Can you pull out the old hen? I like to see your back covering as it covers yeah. down through the tail. See, it lightens up. It's not, doesn't hold. And there's a little blue, little blue down here, which when you put her up in the cook, doesn't show. See? Now the cock is cleaner, even than his mother. And, and I think there's an improvement color-wise on his mother. See how yellow he carries? Though he's still carrying the blue. But see, his gray is not as obvious as it is in the old hen. Yeah, you really can see a definite color change between the three birds. Yeah, and it's all legitimate. She's molting a little more. Uh, in this climate with this fluctuating change in weather, 20, 30, 40 degrees different temperature in 48 hours, and 
and all we have a real problem getting through the most. These birds were all decorated June 1st. The old hens practically finished the molt, the cocks practically finished the molt, and this one here hasn't. So still still hadn't filled out the neck to where it's shining like it should. True silver is a dilute of blue, and so you get them in all the patterns that you get blue in. True silver ball old cock, true silver ball old hen, true silver check old hen, tea pattern old hen. For whatever reason, a young hen, for whatever reason, we tend to call the dark true silvers duns. They're just a tea pattern or a dark check true silver. So if you're showing these pigeons, doesn't matter. One's just as good as another in color. We're the same warning that we have. See, no chest band. Even this little blue hen, see it, it's clean right on down. There's, there's nothing, nothing in the way of a belly band on them. And uh, how can you breed them? You can breed them to anything, but my advice is don't put a true silver with another true silver. They are weaker in feather pigment and they're weaker every other way. That's the only true silver old cock of that quality that I ever raised. And if you try to put him with a true silver hen, I'll almost guarantee you, you won't raise anything. Put him with a dark check or a blue bar if you want bars. Uh, and his daughters will come true silver. If you want to raise true silver cocks, then you put true silver with a blue carrying dilution. And the same goes to yellow. Except yellow just doesn't seem to be quite as weak as true silver. It, to me, uh, with the exception of a couple of the rares, uh, like uh, uh, we get we get to them when we get them in here, uh, milky for example, very weak when you put them together. Uh, but people say, well, gee, that looks like a blue bar. Well, not really. When you get them in hand. See, this color pattern is totally different from a blue bar. People say, well, gee, that looks like it's brown to me. It's different. The bars are gunmetal, the band is gunmetal, and the eye is orange or red. All brown pigeons have what you call false pearl, or the blue, you know, some form of the blue eye. Uh, personally, I think that the gravel or violet is beautiful but in our standard you can't have it unless it's in a brown pigeon so if you've got a black check cock carrying brown and you put him in there they're going to deduct points on the count of his eye color I'd, personally I'd like to see that change but that's not what this is about uh, we'll have some browns out here and you see the difference but I think the camera will pick up that the bars are much darker than the flights on this bird. Well, on a brown, they won't be. The bar will be the same, about the same color as this. And now we'll be ready to go. We got opal. We said that the spread could mask opal. This is the hen that I made it up with intentions of getting black spread and blue checks. She was with the big blue check cock we had in here. And then I got opals, and then I went to look at See that? Can you pick that up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See it? Oh, yeah. Now I got it. Real yeah. good. See it right there? It, it almost masked it, but it can't quite. And, uh, and so half of her children this year were opals. While the other two blacks are black spread over blue bar, and so there, uh, this bird incidentally carries milky. Can you see it on her at all? Pick it up or not. I'll bring a son of his out in due time. It's a milky spread or a lavender. Uh, see, can you pick that up? 
kind of a bluish cast. Yeah, we got it on film. He carries that from a milky mother. It's the only indication is right there in, in the flights. Now, no, that might hurt him if you were showing him as a spread that or barring or whatnot. But I did it to knock the bars off. See, he has absolutely no bars on him at all. And uh, so if you put him with, with a hen that's straight black, then the young should be okay. Some of, some of the birds might inherit the milky, but See, Milky is a pure recessive, so he can't produce Milky without he's got a mate carrying Milky. So as long as you don't put him with a mate carrying Milky, all he's got is 50-50 chance of Milky. And if he doesn't throw it, then you don't get it. Uh, but blacks, I think blacks the most popular rare color. Primarily because you can take <coughs> your best pigeon <coughs> of any color, any blue factor, and put it with a spread and get a black. While with some of this stuff, you're working 15 or 20 years trying to get one that good. Maybe that's why rare, some of the rares aren't as popular, because well, people don't want to put the time. Well, I harder to breed, and, and you go to the show, and you go up against somebody's black, and all he did is went out and got a spread and put it with his best pigeon, he got a black, you know. We really need two rare sections. We need the, what I'd call a dominant rare. You put the bird with anything and you get some of them. While the other is a true recessive. Recessive red, recessive white, milky, recessive opal, where you have to have it coming in from both sides. Certainly the most difficult rare of all the breed is, op is uh, almond. And yet, you know, how is he going to compete with somebody that in one year can get one of his best bird? I mean, I'll bring you some almonds and show what I'm talking about pretty soon in a 30-year, longer than a 30-year program. But this, uh, this is a very popular color, and a lot of the people that have come to me for birds, this one of one of these blacks has been included because I like their type, and they give good, clean color for the most part in the standard color. We've mentioned milky. The black cock that I just had out here, I told you was the father of a spread milky cock. It's what the Lahore people call lavender. And this is this little cock's a late hatch last year. He's not been shown or in the cook. Uh, no show specimen by any stretch of the imagination, but he's, as far as I know, the only spread milky in our breed. I tried putting him with the hen I'm about to show you, that's his aunt, this year. And I did get one or two of them to hatch, but they wouldn't feed. Uh, it's, it's just asking an awful lot to put two milkies together, particularly if they're related. And this is a barred milky. Um, See, the ideal way to get that color would be to have that in a hen and mate her to a blue bar carrying milky. But I don't have that. So I, the demand, South Africa wanted milky and some other people. And actually, these are the only two plus the black cock that I have. So I think next year I'm going to put this hen on the black cock and try to get a keep going like try to get a hint out of him and then use her back on her father or one of his sons. Beautiful, beautiful color. Pale, uh, delicate, almost like a light cocoa. Put him away and then we'll bring Andalusian, which is indigo and black spread. Before we get rid of everything off of black spread. Before you do that, let's show him a little bit. We'll pull out his wing and show the wing shield and stuff again on him because I think this is a beautiful the, color. See, the, the new flights that he's molted right to here are a cleaner 
the, the juvenile flights that he had have a little bit of a, to me, a little bit of a creamy color to them. While these, see, these are just even. See, some of the old feathers here have a little creamy color to them. It looks like he's going to molt out from the looks of those new flights and the top of his head and all to be just real clean colored. Uh, when you mate black spread to indigo, you get what's called Andalusian, and I particularly want to point out the color pattern on this bird because I think it's the best I've ever raised in it or ever seen. Uh, one thing that we noticed a number of years ago, the people were using red with Andalusian, and it was a kind of a dirty looking sort of a color. Uh, I'd give credit to Amos Hodson. We were talking about it, and he and I are really the two that were pushing Andalusian early on, and he said, you know, I found that blue bar, the palest blue bar I can get, works better. So first you have to use black spread to get it. Otherwise, you end up with just a straight indigo. Oh, okay, Richard, now... This, this is an indigo check mm -hmm. made her to a black spread, and some of the birds will be Andalusian. Others will be indigo bar or whatnot. But once you get the spread in indigo, then don't put it with black anymore. Put it with the palest blue bar you can get. You might say, well, why not put two of these together? Well, if you get them homozygous, they're almost white with a dark head and really don't look that good. Uh, I'm I, to the point now that I just don't use them with anything but blue Except bars. Blue bar. Okay. I'll bring two of his sons out here in a minute. Uh, one in, one Andalusian and one black, and show you uh, from a blue bar hen what we got. But you see what the spread that the difference, uh, the difference that the spread makes. It's. Uh, I've seen indigo checks almost red. So yeah, you know, the checking pattern so I almost a red. I don't, like it. I don't like a dirty indigo check. You know, this this one's clean in the chest, no bars, no belly band. Uh, I've also seen Andalusians that were so dark blue they almost yeah, went to a black yeah, spread. Yeah, a lot of breeds. That's what they have. Splotch with black. Keep pounding black spread to them. But to me, this is just a more pleasing. Bird, I, I don't. There's well, no, no rule on it. The the book says that Andalusian is indigo spread. But this cock, he's he's um, he's not splotchy. You uh -huh. know, he, he's got clean it's color placed, all the way through. Every feather. Is yes. Placed, yeah. And he's just clean. Whereas some dark Andalusians, where you get a lot too much black, you'll see a black splotch here and a black splotch there. I'm going to bring his two sons up. One's just like him in color, the other's a black spread. And the trouble with the black spread is, I want you to notice that by putting that lighter color in, I got bars on it, which I don't like. Type and maturity, you probably wouldn't be able to tell father and son apart, the color wise. Hey, hey, you guys. Hey, hey, hey. The other son. See, he's black, but see what the indigo did to his wing bars? Okay, yeah. If you get him to turn. And it's been my experience that in working with black, you have to use them to develop your Andalusian and to get good spread brown. But both of those colors will ruin your black and that they will put bars on them. Now, this, this, this pigeon's got beautiful front color and all, but... See his bars? The, the old three old blacks. Oh, yeah, we got a good have, shot of his wings yeah. shield right now. Yeah. So we'll uh, read and she's molting, see, and it looks splotched. Two words of caution about brown. If you're going to show them, keep them out of the sunlight because they will splotch up on you and separate them unusually early. But I didn't plan to show her. She's done real well in the shows and get a little coarse in the head. Uh, 
So she's sort of my brown stock hen now. Now, what's the difference between a brown and a khaki? Khaki, khaki. is a dilute of brown. Okay. I don't have any khaki here right now. I had a couple, but I sold them. Uh, let me get her father. See, he hasn't faded quite as much. Uh, he's got a few feathers to go. That one there and this one and along here and there. But when I put him up in the cook, you see what the difference in about all 90 days of separation will do for him. See? Oh, yeah. See, by, by the late shows, the winter shows, now they're both, I figure, too rough. But I've got some brown checks and I've had brown bars. But this is my favorite color with brown. And so I'm zeroing in on these two. And uh, they've both been... Uh, actually, the brown hen was best hen at one of the big shows, and this cock is his young bird year. He won Tulsa, Louisville, Des Moines, and then was defeated at Salt Lake by three black cocks that he'd already beaten. Now, what do you breed these two to get this color, Richard? You have to have spread, and you have to have brown. You can use a black spread with a brown bar, a brown check, or a khaki. Uh, but once, what I, what I said earlier, once you put this into the black, you ruin the black, it bars out. Same as you put an in, in indigo into them, it bars out. Now, that might not be everybody's experience, but it's certainly been mine. So, so uh, once you get this color, what do you breed it to to keep it? Uh, I use a uh, tea pattern, dark check, and you've got to spread. You don't need to spread on both sides. Half of your birds are going to be spread anyway. Uh, but I take my strongest, well, my strongest pigeons are my dark checks. And so I'll put that in. She was with an overpowering neck and headed dark check this year. And that's, of course, when you put her with that, the F1 offspring is no brown, but all the cocks carry. It's sex linked. So okay, so if you get the cocks, what do you put them on to get the brown out of them? You got to put the, that split cock on another brown hen to get a brown okay. cock. The brown cock, if I made him with black jack hen, all of his daughters are brown. If he carried dilution, half of them would be. Uh, khaki, but he doesn't carry dilution. But the other way around, it takes two generations using him. So if you had a khaki... I never make this pair together. Okay. That brown will wash out on you. If you had a khaki, what do you breed to get bring back the brown then? If you had a khaki. The khaki is brown. Right. So it's just, the khaki is the same relationship to brown, the yellow is to red, the true silver is to blue. So it doesn't matter. If they got dilution, they're khaki. If they don't have, they're brown. And so if you had, let's say if you had a, a khaki hen, what would you recommend to put her on to try to get well, her Well, if out? you put a khaki, if she a spread hen, yeah. khaki spread, I would put on a tea pattern cock. Okay. All of your cock birds will carry dilution and brown. They will throw some brown daughters. They will throw some black daughters, checkers. They will throw some maybe blue check, blue bar. Uh, you know, the reason why I'm asking, you sent me a khaki yeah. hand spread yeah. that I want to breed browns out of. I like this color. All right. Then all you have to do is put that khaki hand with a black spread cock. Because she's a tea pattern. She's not spread. Oh, okay. I thought she was spread. No. Okay. Put her with a black spread cock and keep the cocks. But understand that those blacks that you breed out of that mating are not to stay with your blacks. They're only good. For breeding the brown. So I put it on a black spread cock yeah. and keep the cocks and then yeah. what I put up them on to get the brown? Back onto the mother or? Doesn't matter. Okay. Put them on the best hen you have. Okay. And and half or fourth of the daughters will be 
brown spread, fourth of them will be khaki spread. See, I got two real good black spread cocks, yeah. and um, I, I want to start that next year because I love this color. Uh, the first time I well, saw this you color, love it a lot more if you see them in December. Yeah, well, I was going to explain that to you. Yeah. Larry Schultz sold one of these at Portland several years ago at the uh, National. He got some off of me. Right, and I fell in love with that color yeah. because, like the young, like the cockbird there, when that when they're finished out, they look like a chocolate candy bar. I'm yeah. just a gorgeous. Yeah, he's uh, he's much nearer through his molt than she is. Uh, you still see a little light spot, <coughs> but that'll all be gone in another two three weeks. It, the problem with him now is that he's just too rough, you know. Uh, I have pretty good luck showing old hens, but for all practical purposes, you know, three-year-old cocks are, it's, it's pretty hard. Most of the old cocks that we go up against that win are yearlings. Maybe a two-year-old if he's real smooth, you know. A lot of them late hatch yearlings. Um, I love this color. I yeah, really do. I... This hen, when she's in right plumage, is just about the epitome of a showbird. Her presence, her attitude, uh, her color, uh, everything about her, just excellent. You can tell the birds have been shown a lot, even when you're not showing them anymore. Too. Well, I'll get faded. We've introduced this color, I have, in about the last I guess 12 years, and uh, Bob English had it, but I don't know that any of that got out. Uh, I got one from him carrying it and, uh, and developed and now have shipped these all over the country and all over the world. Uh, a faded was national champion in Australia this year, and they've got a lot of them in South Africa and other places. This one happens to be a son of the 1987 hen that's pictured in the special four times, one of class at four national. And this is his father. Uh, the son is what faded tends to do. If you notice, he's a little richer colored from the tea pattern. The son was out of a blue check and a faded. Now there's two or three interesting things about faded. Faded is tied to brown in our breed. Every faded hen I've ever seen or ever bred is a brown hen. They're homozygous, brown, faded. Uh, and they're not really pretty. I made a mistake in getting rid of all of my hens because I didn't like the looks and kept the cocks. Well, the problem is that the hen is a sure breeder. Every son that she has is heterozygous faded, and they're all different. The cocks are not, uh, the hens are not. Is that similar to almond? Oh no, okay. it's on the same location on the chromosome as almond is, but it's a, almond and qualmon and faded, and there's one other that are in that same slot, but you can't, there's only one of them can be in there at a time. Right, but what I was saying is like an almond hen, all cocks will be almond, right? Oh, in that sense, sex length. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. faded and almond are sex linked then? Uh, all, all almond hens, sons, <clears throat> will be almond of some sort. Uh, all red hens, sons, will be red of some sort. All faded hens, sons, will be faded of some sort. Now, that faded, heterozygous faded cock made it to say a blue bar, blue check, red check, or whatever. He will throw some faded daughters, but they'll all be brown, no matter what color he is, because it's locked on. He'll throw sons of whatever color he's capable of throwing, depending on what color he is. Uh, this, what happened when I got the first faded, he was, you know, looked like a street pigeon. So I put him with the very strongest blue bar hen that I had, and I took the cocks out of that and put back with her. And pretty soon it dawned on me that the faded was some of my strongest pigeons. Uh, this one here being a good example, and I've got another one that looks just like him, another son. This bird is, is out of 1987 and uh, late hatch last year, possibly. Would be, he's much smoother than this cock, would be the one that, uh, if I show a faded, uh, 
Richard on the faded, I see some dark black ticking in him. That's his T pattern. Okay. And then I see kind of like of a reddish tint in him. Yeah. Now, and the darker the bird is, the more it shows up. And almost like a silver. It's like a silver ground color, almost. Well, it's, it's just what faded is doing to the other color. Now, I want to get this red faded. This, I thought, was probably the best faded cock that I had ever raised. His grandfather was red faded that I took to the Long Island show and was sold there at the auction. When I went to mate him up this year in the little feed cup holders and the coops, he hooked uh, a hawk in there and see how big and it's stiff. And I don't really know whether this cock's ever gonna be able to breed. What I'm gonna do next year, not knowing, is I'm gonna put one of these cocks with a red hen to get me some more. Because, actually, I love the red faded just about as well as the others. But if that cock can, is going to be able to mate, you know, with one leg like that, I don't know. I see a lot of people show reds in the red check class like that. I think they're making mistakes then. Well, if yeah, if the judge really understands color, he could identify the faded uh, off of that. I'll catch his cock and, and we'll compare color here. See, if he had a light check, uh, coming down from a light check, while he has a lot of the faded markings, you don't get any darkness through the background. Around that way. Yeah, uh, now open the wing. Yeah, he's got a pretty light background. These guys here, all they want to do is tear themselves up so they can. Well, this one I have the T pattern. See the rosy looking? Yeah. That's what I was asking earlier. There's yeah. kind of like a rosy red there. Yeah. Still has a black tickler. Look at the chest when he brings it around. Well, I hope he'll breed, but I have real serious doubts about it. Oh, no. I had high hopes for showing him this year. Of course, that's all over. See how pale that is by comparison with a red check? See out into here? It's different. Started on recessive red and yellow, and uh, it's knit one pearl too. You you breed your best recessives to something, and you save those, and they aren't recessives, and you breed them together, and you get one. So finally, this year, what the problem is cleaning it up. When you put them with your good blue factor birds, the tail's blue and so forth. Uh, this. This is the best one, so I kept her to perpetuate. Uh, this is recessive yellow. Uh, doesn't have the head, obviously, that I want. But, but you notice, I've uh, cleaned a lot of the sear off. She's got maybe enough reach and a medium beak. So now, what to do? And uh, I'm going to mate her to a homozygous red velvet. hoping to knock all the blue out, see, to keep the blue out. She's still got just a little bit in that white. That white is awful hard to get off of a recessive red. But uh, color-wise, in our breed, I haven't seen anything any better. You know, you see, I tried it with out of Carno with, with the beautiful red that they have. In fact, I had a daughter of the national champion at Peoria. I got him from the owner, that Cardinal Cock that won champion. And every last one of those F2s had uh, plum. You know, and just didn't work. This one, uh, Howard Kerrigan bred the, the original hen, I think out of Johns or something, and I, you know, this bird doesn't have any natural station. I haven't worked it because I'll never show her she's not that good. But a, a thing to keep in mind about breeding rare colors, you hear the old cliche, build your house and then paint it. With rare colors, you paint your house and then build it. 
Otherwise, you end up with a great show bird that's a lousy color. You just as well stayed with a great show bird that had good color. So, I might raise a nest mate to this bird that's ten times better than she is, for sure. But if he's bad color, I'd go. And this is, this is kind of hard for people to understand. But I think it's, it's very important that it be done that way. Because one of the things I'm finding out is a lot of people are confused, not only in the color patterns, but to breed what to what. We covered in Andalusia, yeah. you know, and we really went into black spread and, yeah. and the brown black there. Black spreads and Andalusians, I think, ought to, ought to go with the lightest blue bar. If you don't have one, the very lightest check. Always trying to improve type. Um, I think uh, some people would say brown, but in working with oriental frills, I, I, I bred uh, red spot tails years ago that were just unbelievable. And I had to do it with blue black and then eliminate the plum. I could, brown gives them a brick color. It just, just does away with the sharpness. See, this bird is yellow. There's not any brown cast to it or blue cast to it or anything. Real even color too throughout. Yeah, and I don't really know that what I'm doing is going to work. That's part of the fun of the game. But a homozygous red cock should have intense strength. I wouldn't put it with, you know, that yellow cock would be great, except I would weaken the constitution of the bird with yellow to yellow. Because while this is recessive yellow and that's ash red yellow, it's still a dilute factor on both sides. So it's two different color sources. It's still both of them are dilute, so I would not make that mating. Uh, you said earlier, you know, when you put a silver to silver, they're weak. They're weak. Same thing with the dilute, if Feathers you put a dilute to loop. This pigeon is a red pigeon with two thirds of its red gone, and therefore it's yellow. It's just that simple. And and it's also got about a third of the constitution. Uh, it's not strong. You try to breed them and you run into trouble. So patience is the name of the game when you start you messing with the you. rare colors. And I, you know, I got high hopes of, a, of developing something that can be put out across the breed in a, in a gorgeous yellow. Well, I don't know, five or six years ago, two or three of the fellows asked if I could come up with some whites. Uh, you know, we've got those orange-eyed whites and so forth. So I began to study a white, and I borrowed a, a little, uh, rather cold giant, small little hen with, didn't have giant station, one air hours in body. And these are five generations down, and I'll get the mother to this bird bring it in. This is a young one. But these are white. These are pure recessive white. Uh, you breed this pigeon to another white, and she's like white king, it's going to be white. Breed this pigeon to a black chick, all of the F1s will be black chick. But when you put those black checks together, some of the young are going to be white. Now the question is, can you get a pie ball? It's almost impossible to know without forever breeding them whether or not any recessive carries pie ball. And here's why. Pie ball is probably the most dominant trait we have in pigeons. In horses, in dogs, in hogs, cattle. Uh, people that have bred Angus cattle for a hundred years. Catch a calf, look around the udder, white or a little spot of white somewhere. Uh, horse, he can be solid chestnut, solid bay, and the majority of them will have a little white around a fetlock, a little white right here somewhere. A Holstein cow, uh, she can be almost solid black, but her switch and right around the ankle, white. Uh, it's so strong that I've forgotten who one of the old masters said, you put one white feather in a loaf of birds and just leave them there with all the rest of them solid color. And in 10 generations, 
mate those 10th generation birds together. And every pigeon they hatch will have white on it, and I believe it. It's strong. That's the reason that I've been against introducing this pied splash. They're beautiful, but I think they're going to set us back color-wise. Yeah, Bill Sleeper's real strickler on that when he calls. He calls anything out with white. White, hawk, hawk, white, white, vent, back. white back. Yeah, uh, white around the neck. I'm going to bring you eye. a couple of pad splashes that I developed here before we're done by pure accident. And they're not going into the family. They just happened. I don't even know what happened. But uh, let me go up and get this. Now, before you, before you do, I want to discuss this thing about the eye color on a pure white. Yeah, they're bull-eyed. They're bull-eyed, yeah. If a bird has an orange eye, whatever else it is, it's grizzled. And uh, what happened, uh, so far as I know, the first of these orange-eyed whites, it was in Fresno, and I believe it was the Fresno National. I showed two of a mother and son red grizzles. Len Motkus asked if he could have them. He wanted to work on whites. And he kept inbreeding those red grizzles, and I believe he put some spread into them. Anyway, pretty soon <coughs> he had beautiful metallic white birds with orange eyes. And they're gorgeous, but as soon as you cross one of them with a blue check, a blue bar, or something else, you've got a bunch of ordinary grizzled pigeons. While our piebald, with these birds, you can you can mate that bird to a black check and raise 10 young ones and they'll all be black checks. If he carries pie which I don't know, there may be some splashes. But that has nothing to do with this white. You take those solid checkers, <laughs> back the parents <coughs> birds, except for the old white hen that's third generation now, were all blue checks and black checks. The reason why I asked There a white feather on them. The and I got four. White ones this year. The reason why I asked is because I'm seeing a lot of white American show racers with either orange or yellow eyes. Yeah, that's grizzle. And uh, I've talked to some people that have bred whites. They got whites. And I also noticed that if you hold them up to the light, they're almost like got a yellow tint to them. They're, I call them metallic. Yeah. Uh, this feather here is totally devoured of, of pigment. So is the eye. See, there's, it's just white, white, white. Bull eye, horn beak or clear beak, clear feet, white toenail. Now I'll get the old hen down. She's one generation further back than that one, but still white. No, no color. Most of those grizzles, if you check them over, they'll have maybe under here something, one little red feather something. Uh, and you get them out in the sunlight, they have a, you'd call it a cream, but I, to me it's a little more off-white, like like it had some lamp black in it or something. The reason why I said that is because I, I used to also raise Cornish. And when you took a white lace red and you put it on a white Cornish, you would come up with a... Uh, Catch him. He won't fly, I don't think he... Anyway, you came up with a, a white Cornish, but if you put it in the soil... This is a Qualman. We mentioned earlier that Qualman, Almond, Faded are all located at the same spot on the uh, chromosome, but they are not interchangeable. You can't get a Qualman out of an Almond or a Faded out of a Qualman or anything like that. Dr. Hollander came up with this, found this color somewhere and distributed it, and I put it into show racers out of a Marcinero powder. So this bird uh, got a long way to go in the head, but that's my, my most, it's never been in a cook before, but that's my most, uh, this is a hen, and uh, it's my best stock hen for qualman. Uh, it's really a color that I wish that, uh, you know, it was just gorgeous. You know, it looks almost like a blue grizzle in a way with the, well, it, with the specking in the neck. Yeah, it's different from anything, you know. Every, the webbing, uh, 
Yeah, when you open the wings, you can yeah. see a difference, but I'm just saying yeah. that the head and neck... A area, lot of breeds are, are zeroing in on this color. Chinese owls are zeroing in on it, all the powder people. Uh, I believe Indian fantails. And I'd like to see more breeders in in uh, show racer, but we just don't have them. I think I've got four, and I'll be breeding all four of them. But you know, you breed along, you breed six or eight, and you don't get one Qualman. I haven't raised. I got the first baby Qualman in there. He's about three weeks old right now, out of of uh, one of her sons. Gorgeous color, and we bring the almond. And well, maybe I'll leave her down here to show the that, difference. Yeah, yeah that, I think so really too. Really, no, no comparison to them. These almonds are father and son. The one in here is the father. This is the son. You notice the ground color on this one's much better. But what they call the break, the black and the white and all, it really spangles them up in in the old cock is the better. They're both. I was a yearling and a two-year-old. These almonds are never showed, particularly when you get one this color. Look how rich that in there is and how the black. Interesting thing about almond, you notice he's got a lot more black showing on him than this one. Every year they get darker. More black? More black until some old almond cocks are like 75 and 80 percent black. I want to get this qualman out, but I think it's pretty obvious the difference. See, this is a gray pigeon with black and gray, and these others are about a, really about a five-colored bird. I thought about showing this bird, but the problem with it, I've got probably between 25 and 30 years in getting this far with that much type and and all, and he goes in against somebody that bought a black last year and crossed it with his best pigeon, and he ends up in sixth place, and uh, it's just not worth it. But so the fun of the almonds has been mostly here in the law. Um, I'm, uh, you see, this bird's got a tremendous head on him. Uh, I have started two or three other people uh, within the last year or two, and this is the cock that bred my splash pied this year that I want to bring in and show you. If we get him out, we'll do that. This is the best colored almond cock. Made it to a tea pattern dark check hen, showing just a little bit of bronze. I got this pair of babies here. When they were came out of the nest, they looked just exactly alike, except that the one on the left maybe was just the tiniest bit brighter <coughs> than the other one. Certainly no brighter than this one's neck now. Since then I've bred two other rounds. I've got six pigeons out of this cock and that hen. It all turned out the same way. One good almond like this almond hen and one of these splash pads. I don't know how far it's going, but so far, every time that pigeon molted a feather, it's come in white. I couldn't believe it when it started. Look at there. She didn't have one white primary or secondary as a baby. There's one cover there that she got still colored, that she hasn't molted. On this side, she's molted that one and it's white. She's got one feather here. The head was solid almond. Now, as fast as the head molts, it's white. And of course, I have no way of knowing whether these are old or new. So 
So we're going to watch it to see if she bleaches out totally white. What is she? I don't know. Uh, Richard, you know, there's a racing homer family in Europe called the Muleman's. Yeah. And they come out red as red can be. But as they get older, they mold out white. All right, I know what that is. Okay. That's recessive red. There's a lot of recessive red that carries that white splotching, modeling. Yeah. As far as I know, this bird could have recessive red in that I put recessive red into my almond probably 30 years ago, but I've never gotten a recessive red out of them, primarily because I never made it an almond to an almond. They always went with something else, and I never kept anything out of an almond to put into my family. I, I don't know. I suspect that way back the Lord only knows when and where. Recessive white, recessive red. And it just is some kind of a blend of the two. The fact that the, the next two, they're younger, but they're right where this one was at their age. I think I'm going to have three of these. Now, <clears throat> down at Dallas recently at the fraternity show, Gary Cooper had a red and white with white streaks in the red. Beautiful bird. Same color as this one, different pattern. And we're going to try, either next year or the following year, depending on what's hens and what's cocks. He thinks his are both cocks, and I don't know what mine are. To put one of them with one of his and see if we can lock in anything. They may end up green, I don't know. You know, there, there's no genetic knowledge that I can figure out. I, I can go back in that cock for uh, close to 30 years. Everything is in him, and there's never been anything like this. And the same with the hen, so I don't know. But it, it is interesting as a splash pad situation. Now, the little almond hen, you seldom get an almond hen this well marked. You no, know, usually they're a lot lighter. See, she's lighter in here than, than her father. You don't get them that rich, but uh, I'll have at the end of the year out of that pair three like this and three like that and nothing in between. You know, I'd, I'd love to see somebody pick up on the almond, but I'll tell you, it's almost a thankless job because it's just too many factors. I figured I've got to keep around 25 pigeons in the almond program to keep the almond color going. You know, this factor and that factor that you know you have. You can't guess it because you, you guess it and put a mating in and you get them pale, almost white, yellow looking or something. And to get a true almond, it, it, you just got to have all those factors in your hand and know that they're in those birds. I want to bring a bronze down, probably the bird that'll go with this one. Now, why would you put the bronze with her? To hold that color. She wouldn't hold that color. What would happen uh, by not holding the color? Would she come out darker? It's light like that bird you saw outside that I said I wouldn't keep it. Belongs to Kent Wright. And I'm using him this year. If you zoom him in, that is pure bronze. See it? Notice every flight's got it all through here, all through his head. The only one I ever saw that equaled this one was a hen that Amos Hudson had, I suppose, 20 years ago or more. I borrowed her one year and crossed her into my almond and got the best almond hen color-wise that I ever bred up until that one. Uh, and you asked why I would put them together. And the whole purpose would be to try to keep what I've got there. If anything, enhance it, but just keep it. 
And if the hens will come that color, then the cocks ought to come deep, you know. Uh, tell you my my feeling toward Almond, 25, 30, I don't know, a long time ago, many years ago at the pageant, Sharp from England showed some English short-faced tumblers. And the little cocks were half black and uh, an almond richer than the color of this hen's neck and bronze. And a fellow by the name of Peters out there got some of them. And then over the years, they just didn't come that good in color. There's still a lot of English short face almonds, and they've got the best almond. And they may have that color in other places, but I haven't seen it in years at the shows I've gone to. And that's in the back of my mind is what I'd like for these almonds to be. But it has to be the most difficult color breeding project that I've ever run into. Do more difficult than faded or anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot more. A lot more. Because you're always dealing with five color factors and about three patterns. That break that this cock has. No, it's just to get those black splotches and those white splotches. It's just almost impossible. And imagine if you would. Let me catch this cock. What I. If I can get a hold of them here and show you what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put that bronze on there. Make this pigeon almost as dark as that bronze where he has his almond yellow or whatever you want to call it, see? All over. But still keep the white spots, the black spots. <coughs> <coughs> this bird probably has the best break you know, color break of any almond that I've raised. His son has a better color, a body color. I think this mating could have an even better body color, particularly in the cock birds. So that's, that's what I'm at. I believe that, uh, just thinking, I think that about covers all the rares that we have uh, by way of conclusion some things that I've learned keep your blues that you're going to show pure or use pure reds on them. Uh, I found that mating related checkers together they'll get darker. You could take two related blue checkers, first cousins, half brother and sister and just mate those birds together and inbreed them and in three or four generations they'll be a lot darker and they'll ultimately get to be black check tea pattern velvet um, good clean red enhances dark check I think for for blue bar and blue check to stick with blue bars and blue checks and maybe two silvers uh, is the way to go for recessive red and yellow, stay with pure red over them. You know, you're going to plumb them if you put uh, smoky, something like that helps in uh, the recessive red to, to even it out. But you don't want what comes out of blue, you know, it gives them a plum color. In those birds like that, remember color first. Uh, you talk about faded and everybody loves the color. I think you just have to go with whatever you like the best. I know uh, Tom Zarek used the grandfather that red cock I had here for a year or two up until he died. And he had him with a, he was a checker and uh, a red checker faded. 
He used him with a kind of a light blue check in, but most of the sons that came out of that were barred faded, and they were gorgeous pigeons. Did real well. Uh, when I started, as I told you, I used that blue bar hen over those, under those faded cocks twice. And so I had mostly bars. But after I began to get these checkers, I just liked them better. So I've stayed with, with the checkers and the dark ones uh, for two reasons. Uh, I like it, and the best heads that I have are on the dark checks or the opals. And I think oval and faded, you're kind of at cross swords because they're just this doesn't work that way. Uh, I, you could go opal with anything. Some of the most beautiful opals I've seen. In fact, one of the birds that I sent to South Africa was a real pale red opal. And those people, been four of them over here, and they just raved about that bird. And they're breeding a lot of that. But, uh, and there are people in this country, at every national, you'll see three or four of them. I just don't have to like them as well. So I don't use reds or yellows with my faded. I may put one of those faded cocks with a blue bar hen next year just to try to get a, you know, a lighter faded or, or a bar just, just to have one. Though I like the kind of bird that you saw up here. Well, Richard, I wanted to come up. I wanted to take a picture of you because we're losing a lot of our rares. We don't have people interested in them. I'm hoping this generates an interest in the American Show Racer Association because um, there's a lot of hard work put forth by people like yourself, Amos Hodson, uh, Earl Deal, and just to mention a few. And I don't, I don't want to see it lost. You know. Well, I think there's two problems with rares, maybe more. Uh, the name of the game today, for most fans, is is winning. And let's face it, and we've had a national every year since I think 1952 or three. There's been one red bar, one red check, and two grizzles. Everything else has been blue bar, blue check, and dark check. If, if winning is everything, then man be stupid not to take blue bar, blue check, and dark check, and forget all the rest of it. And that bears out the second problem. How much loft space do you have? I'm retired. I like colors. I built enough loft if I wanted to. I'd probably handle 400 here in the spaces that I have. Uh, I don't want to crowd them, so I don't have half that many. But uh, if I wanted, if you know, if you're going to win with eight pair, six pair, ten pair, and a little backyard loft, and you're working man, and you're never at home or something, then uh, really the rares probably aren't for you. I would hope that more retired people or semi-retired people, more people afford <laughs> an acre or two and, uh, and a bigger loft and a little more feed, you know, would take up at least one or two. Uh, I don't know as I could wish Almond off on anybody. I mean, that's a lifetime project and you got to love it. To do it, it's it's you just got to figure about at least two pins and at least twelve pair. You know, you got to breed for bronze. You got to breed for break. You got to breed for type. You got to breed breed for the almond factor. Uh, you just keep and and if you go with one pair and you don't get that factor that year, you're dead. I mean, the birds are a year older, and you don't have that factor. And if any one of those factors is missing, you're not going to get what you're after. So, uh, probably not. I, I think qualman is automatic. If, if you get a qualman and you made it with something, you know, they'll come lighter or darker. I, that one I brought down here is one of my darker ones because I like that, that color rather than a kind of a cloud one, where the contrast is, is severe. Uh, recessive red isn't for anybody that doesn't have a lot of time and patience because it's slow. Same thing with white. Spread black is the easiest of all. You just buy yourself a decent spread black and 
put it with the finest pigeon you got, you know, and you get half of them spread black. Brown, uh, you've got to use spread black to get it in the right color, but all the brown, all the spread blacks can brown, you can use with brown or kill them because it ruins them for color, for showing, or for breeding. Same thing is about true with Andalusian. You, you get indigo into your uh, into them and your blacks with an indigo parent, they're barred and they're kind of cloudy looking. In fact, I've had pigeons here about every year. You, that black cock with the bars on, I wouldn't swear he's black. He looks black, but when you look under his wings, he might well be a real black looking indigo. See, you're mentioning some things that you showed on the tape, which I thought was very beneficial for people if they want to look. You brought out a real dark check with the opal in him, mm -hmm. and you showed the color, and you flipped his wing. I noticed a lot of times when you were showing birds that were questionable colors, you flipped open the inside of the wing, mm -hmm. and it gave away their um, true color. And I'm hoping that all this helps, because when people want to get into a rare color, or also, we were having the difficulties of the new members, like myself, that come up and we breed this funny colored looking bird. And we go in and we might put it in the rare and we're making a mistake because it could be an opal. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know the different colors of an opal. Or, you know, and so I'm just hoping that this helps educate people to make sure they, first of all, put the birds in the proper color classes yeah. for judging. Because it's a real uh, hindrance on a, on a judge and on a show when you have to have a committee to go down the rows and properly place the you birds. Need a, you need a committee. And and one place that the problems almost always show up is under there. See how yeah. much easier it is to see that bronze? Yeah. Uh, and any any off color will almost always show up there or in the bar. But but the place where it's even more important than in the show is in the breeding model. If you're trying to breed what you might say midnight black spread, and you fan a wing out and you see gray or something that could be interpreted. Let me get that pigeon out here and just, just show you, find an empty spot for this one. What I'm, you'd say black, but I want you to study that bird's color. See all that pattern that's laced in there like that Andalusian cock, his father had and his brother? And then look at there. Oh yeah, you can see the, look at the tips of the flights. That's not black. No. Is it Andalusian? Is it just mismark, you know? So you have to use black to get started with your Andalusian, but you know, I suspect that this bird might well be an Andalusian. Do you and have I'll any... probably breed him, you know, and maybe find out. Do you have any milkies on the property? We haven't really talked about You had two milkies out here, remember? Okay. The the cock, the spread milky cock, that we call the lavender. Oh, okay, yeah. And, and, and the uh, barred in. Uh, Bob English wrote a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, article in, I believe it was the 1991 special, in which he said, Something to the effect, if you don't have a whole lot of time and patience, don't tackle Milky. Uh, I've raised Milky now for 10 years or more. You get two in the nest. One's a Milky, one's a Blue Check. Blue Check will be four times better than Milky. One of them dies. It'll always be the Milky. You know, it's, it's, some of this stuff is just weak. And... Again, it, it's a matter of patience. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Because I think you pretty much covered everything. No, about I, I, you know, I, I hopefully, well, I would say this, that as long as I'm able, anybody that's got a question in their breeding program that I can help them with, all they have to do is write me a letter or pick up the phone. Sometimes when you pick up the phone, it catches me unaware and I can't think. <laughs> but if, if you know you can try it and then I ask people to write me a letter when they want something because then I got it in front of me and sometimes I don't know the answer but I'll go back at my own breeding record and see if what he's saying happened happened yeah you've been very beneficial for me because you've sent me some birds like an almond hen and some opals yeah. and 
And I would, you know, I, I called you several times, like Opals. I thought maybe they were sex linked too, but you told me yeah. no, that you know, Opal Hen will produce either sex Opals and same thing with Opal Cock. Any color in the rainbow, so far as pattern is concerned, yeah. you know. And then when I talked to you about the Almond Hen, you explained to me that she'll produce Almond Cocks, but you know, everything yeah. else will be uh, Hens. Yeah. And I, that really helped to me because yeah. I produced a beautiful blue check hen off that yeah. almond, and I'm really excited about her. Now, one thing we didn't mention, and it really has nothing to do with color, but it has everything to do with color. If you're not going to breed these recessives and in individual pens, forget it. Yeah, we should have covered that, yeah. I mean, uh, I've heard people talk about they never get, they made them open, you know, and they never get off colors. Uh, close with an experience I had a number of years ago. A fella gave me a red check racing home. He's come immediately. And I didn't have a red check on the place. I had, I was breeding eight pair of black checks and blue checks. So I pulled one of the cocks and put him in there. And I was just letting them open in the pen. First round I got seven reds. And that cock wasn't even homozygous. Since then, I have never bred anything except sometimes where I don't care. Like if I've got a rare colored hen and, and I want to get fertility, I'll put her in with three black check cocks or something. One of them made up with, I don't care who, who the daddy is, I'm after a bird out of that bird and I don't want to risk it with one. And I do that usually in July and August and September. But otherwise, uh, a pen, no other cock gets to that hen through the breeding season. And that's why you said you, you need a lot of room then. And a lot of room and a lot of nest boxes and, and versatility and ability. I find I've got, let's see, three, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15 different compartments plus four or five little hospital units that I could put a pair into to mate them up. If I break up a pair, that hen, even though they're separate in, you know, 10 individuals within one pen section, I'll never leave that hen in that same section. compartment. I'll move her back here where you can't see her here. Because uh, I'll tell you, some of these cocks, they don't have anything to do with a hen for six months you know, after you break them up. Some of them could care less. I mean, they'll mate with her the same day. But I've had cocks that would kill anything you put in there. You just can't do it. So individuals for color above all else, individual pens. And what I said earlier, paint your house and then build it with color. Okay. You know, this happens to be a pretty decent headed pigeon, but if he looked like a street pigeon and I wanted the color, and the color was right, I'd breed it. Well, I want to thank you very much. I hope yes, it helps sir. the American Show Race Organization again because... Um, hope it helps anybody sees it. Yeah.